Well, hey everyone, how's it going? Sean here at Genetry Solar. I have here my test bench on my studio bench, I guess. And uh, in this video, I'm actually going to be demonstrating our 120 volts to 240 volts split phase conversion. This is a question I get sometimes, and uh, well, I figured that a video would be great for explaining and showing this actually in action. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so of course, before I get into this video, I encourage you to head over to janitrysolar.com. That's where we'll find our new 6,000 watt and 12,000 watt inverters, battery balancers. I also have some older power jack stuff I've put together. Great for backup inverters. I've always said have a backup of a backup of a backup. You never want to be without power when you need it the most. Cheap inverters, great backup. Also, the forums forums.genetrysolar.com. It's kind of like Sid's Playground. We've got a nice little community over there where we talk about everything. We've got updates on our inverters, software updates, etc. And it's a great community. I encourage you to check that out. And of course, the last thing is our homesteading channel, Genetry Homestead. I've been posting more videos there as well. So if you're into the farming and the homestead and so on, check out that channel right here on YouTube. So I have been asked... How exactly does this work? Well, it's just basically the way that we wire our transformers and our relays. They do have the capability, if you only have access to 120 volts, you can still get 240 volts out, split phase, out of your inverter. Now, of course, doubling the voltage, that is stepping it up to 240 from 120, is going to require more power, bigger wires, and so on from your 120 volt setup. So keep that in mind. Make sure you size your breakers and your wires appropriately if this is what you're actually going to be doing because we still have limitations on the input wiring. But you can still, if let's say you have a breaker panel, a service panel that's set up for 240 split phase, and unfortunately you don't have access to 240 volts split phase input, and you got a generator, and you don't want to have to redo any wiring or something like that, you could take the 120 volts input from your generator and still get 240 volts out to your panel, making sure that you shut off all of your big stuff to make sure that you don't overload the generator or the wiring leading to the inverter. So this is one of my test inverters. This inverter here is one of the original inverters that was a revision B inverter. I have since converted it to revision C. It's got wires everywhere. This is my test inverter that I use to test LCD screens, control boards, MOSFETs, and so on. It is my test inverter. And so here it sits, and I'm gonna show you exactly how this works. So I do have a power supply that is currently supplying 29 volts DC to the inverter. Not sure how well you're going to be able to see this, but the MOSFET lights are on. I'm going to go ahead and turn the inverter on. Now, please keep in mind that this whole thing is live. There's a lot of potential here for injury. Never do this live. This is just for demonstration. I know what's safe, what's not safe to touch. So here we should have, and I'll stand up and look, we should have, and we do, a 240 volts split phase output on the front end. Now, I have all the output wires actually disconnected, so we're monitoring this directly from the control board because I never plug anything in here, so it's just all disconnected. It makes it easier for me to work on, but it's the exact same thing as if it was going to this front panel here. The probes, which are here, are on the output L1 and output L2 terminals. It is currently running in 240 volts split phase, as you can see here. So the inverter is running, the FETs are currently running, and they are generating 240 split phase. Now this right here is my input cable here. Now, to be <laughs> perfectly transparent for those who might think there might be a little trickery going on here, I do have my meter here. Uh, hopefully you can see this over the glare of the, um, of the studio lights, but we're gonna go ahead and set these two probes in here. 
no trigger either going right there and we have 127 volts currently coming into this is grid power coming into this strip here so i'll go ahead and get this out of the way so we have 127 volts coming in and i am going to plug in the input line on the inverter shortly after the input line is actually connected it will you'll hear the relay switch it will turn off the MOSFETs and it will be running exclusively on this line here. So let's plug it in, wait a few seconds. There you have it. You can actually hear, I know you can't hear it on camera, but you can actually hear the actual FETs. They're powering down. It's kind of neat how it works where there's no fan noise, no nothing going on. You can actually hear what's going on. So it's pretty cool. But anyway, so we have now the inverter is running in pass-through mode. The MOSFETs are currently off. They are not running, but yet you can still see we have 240 volts split phase running to the output of the inverter. So we have 110 volts, 120 volts coming in, and we have 240 or 220 going out. So if you're in a pinch and you don't have access to 240 volts, we do have an auto switching relay here. This relay that sits right on top here switches between 120 and 240. You can still give the inverter 120 volts input and still get 240 volts output because it is wired this way internally and on the board in the way that we actually move our relays. It's able to do that. So again, this is great for emergency backup in a pinch if you don't want to have to rewire just so that you can get your lights on because half of your lights are on one L1, half of your lights are on L2, something like that. You don't want to go throughout the, the bother of having to worry about it, having to move things around. If you're in an emergency situation, you can have a backup generator that's set up, that's ready to go, that's 120 volts, that will give you 240 volts split phase out. Just keep in mind, you're doubling the voltage because you're stepping up the voltage. So it's going to be twice as hard on your generator. So keep that in mind. You're going to need appropriately sized wiring. You're going to need appropriately sized breakers to be able to do that. But it can do that. The inverter is capable of giving you 240 split phase on the output, even if you have 110 volts input. So, of course, if you have 240 volts input, you can get the same 240 volts output. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the grid, and you'll see on the scope it'll go back to, well, you probably won't notice it because it's almost instantaneous. But we're still generating 240 volts split phase regardless of the fact that we've disconnected our input or the input's connected. It does not matter. You're getting 240 volts out split phase. Just another one of the awesome features of our inverters that is a standard on all inverters. Now, if you do wire a 6,000 watt inverter for 120 volts output, you're not gonna get 240 volts split phase. That is only a select few that requested 120 volts output. That's a full six kilowatts at 120 volts. You're gonna need to set it up specifically for that situation. So we do appreciate your support. We are happy to assist you in any questions you might have. 833-GENITRY, toll-free Monday through Friday, 9 to 4. You will get a hold of me directly. Call volume is still rather elevated, so please leave a message or send me a text message to that number, and I will help you as soon as I can. I do ship these internationally, but you're going to have to get me a quote because, unfortunately, the way the website is set up, it cannot give an international quote. We do appreciate all of your support, as always. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully it's been helpful and take care.